This is Solo Only, a character that can't interact with other players. No parties, no market board, no NPC support, just Solo, his trusty axe bill, and the many minions we found along the way. There are four fights standing between us and the end of A Realm Reborn. Garuda, Titan, Keeper of the Lake, and the Chrysalis. For the past few episodes, I've said over and over that we're facing the hardest content yet, but even those fights pale in comparison to what we have to face today. We'll need to find a way past a boss that can heal for more than the damage I do to it, Titan's Jail instantly killing us, an insurmountable damage test in Keeper of the Lake, and an even worse damage test in Chrysalis. But despite the odds, we push on, ready and excited for the next challenge. The main problem we have now is that we're not actually allowed to continue the MSQ until we get through Garuda and then Titan. Before starting on Garuda though, we stop in for the rising event, get called out by Yoshi P. Like him, I want to be able to deal with any problem without help. Well, maybe one day. That's right, a worthy adventurer doesn't rely on others. If you can't accept this, if you wish to remain an adventurer, then you must win me over and it begins with pondering why you first embarked upon this path. That's, you know what? Okay, this is hitting a little close to home gamers. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep reading this dialogue. Finish the event and unlock the greatest game ever made. Additionally, you have also unlocked the Koopa Koopa adventure minigame on the steps of Nald. Speak to Nanora. Okay, we gotta try the Koopa Koopa adventure minigame. Greetings, are you here to test your skills in the excitement of Koopo Koopo Adventure? Uh, you bet I am, Koopo. What the heck are these? What is happening? I should have read what this is. We spend a little bit of time on Koopo Koopo Adventure. Uh, oh, uh, hold on. Hello? A little bit? I had to watch you play Koopo Koopo Adventure for longer than you spent on Leviathan. Don't lie. Yeah, no, just like uh, maybe five minutes or something. Nothing too big. Hold on, watch this. Make sure to hit the like button for more epic Koopo Koopo trick shots and comment Koopo down below. I'm going for I'm going for for this spot, right? Uh, no, my damage! No, no, don't do damage to me! No, you don't! Let me move! No, 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 no! no my no damage run is over. Would you pay for more levels if they sold them in the cash shop? What for Koopo Koopo Adventure? Yeah, I would buy a whole game of this. I think. Just make an entire Koopa Koopa Adventure video game. I will buy it. I am the target demographic for this. Okay, I'm happy with that score. 61,625. Maybe one day I will return for more Koopa Koopa Adventure. I can't let myself do that for the rest of the day because I absolutely will. A Realm Reborn hunts are just meant to kill new players. You've got an aggressive A rank level 50 hunt on the main road for level ones out of Ulda. <laughs> what the heck is this doing here? Who did this? What monster made it spawn here? After finally breaking away, we're back on track and start Garuda hard on Silence Echo. We've done some Garuda attempts before, so we weren't as blind as usual. We'd be trying Garuda without the level 60 gear we got to take down Shiva and only swap if we needed the extra stats. There's a reason I put off the Garuda fight last time, as there's a lot of mechanics to cover. First phase is just like normal mode. There are four rocks in the center that take damage throughout the fight. If the rocks break, Garuda's phase transition will do exponentially more damage. Garuda uses four main attacks. Friction, a small AoE, Downburst, an instant tank buster that hits everything in front of her, Wicked Wheel, a larger AoE centered on Garuda, and Slipstream, a dodgeable cast that stuns everything in front of her if they get hit. Occasionally, Garuda will leave and reappear at a random cardinal direction and cast Mistral Song. If there isn't a rock between you and Garuda when this finishes, she deals a large chunk of damage. Around 90%, Garuda will summon Razor Plumes, adds that rush over to the rocks and explode if they aren't killed in time. An explosion that we couldn't care less about, and you'll see why later. After the plumes are finished, Garuda jumps to the center of the arena and casts Mistral Shriek. Same concept as Song, hide behind a rock. This cycle continues until 60%. Spawning Razor Plumes all around the arena, this time the plumes are targeting us. Thankfully, the plumes stop moving when they're about to explode, so it's easy to dodge. And then, Garuda casts Aerial Blast before starting Phase 2. For most fights, failing the mechanic prior to their phase change will result in certain death. But surprisingly enough, Aerial Blast doesn't do enough damage to kill us even on level sync, so we're able to ignore the rocks completely. With phase 2 started, the real fight can finally begin. Throughout this phase, Garuda will spawn cyclones around the arena, dealing heavy damage and knockback if you stand in them. Just under 50%, Garuda turns the fight from a decently easy battle into a marathon of perfection. 
two adds spawn, each tethered to Garuda. The orange tethered ad gives Garuda a damage up for as long as it's alive, and the green tethered ad gives her a regen. Both ads are basically mini Garudas, copying three of her normal attacks, including downburst. With Charada dying, the regen ends and you get a glimpse into why this fight is so difficult. Using all of my burst, killing them as fast as I could, Garuda healed 6% of her health in the time Charada was alive. Focused on bringing Garuda's health back down, we ignore the second ad until it leaves on its own, casting Mistral Shriek as a farewell present. Now we were on a timer. I needed to heal back up and make up for the damage lost before Suparna and Charada came back. Soon after, we're faced with another set of plumes, but this time with a much more dangerous one. If we're near the satin plume when it explodes, it will put us to sleep, giving Garuda 30 seconds of uncontested damage and guaranteeing our death. With the plumes done, we're on to the final mechanic. Garuda shrinks the size of the arena and spawns Charada and Suparna for round two of tethers. Beaten down before we could even kill one of them, our first attempt ends. On our second attempt, we're back to the same spot with Garuda at 44% health. Barely managing to kill the healer, Garuda had regened back up to 50 50%. And shortly after that, we take our second death. This fight needed perfect mitigation management. I needed to heal at just the right time, reduce damage by specific numbers, and even use my invulnerability off cooldown. But our third attempt showed that it was possible. With just 700 health left, we managed to survive Saparna's Mistral Shriek and start the cycle again with another set of plumes. We were making progress. Small progress, but progress all the same. Until the fourth visit from our feathered friends ended the run. At my absolute best, I could drop Garuda by 12% in between each ad spawn, meaning I would have to survive almost 10 sets of them to finish this fight. So now we grind until we can do just that. <laughs> that was like down the uh, how long was that fight? Oh. <laughs> oh man, did that just did that fight take the whole food buff? That was, that was a 26 minute fight. Are you crazy? That's one boss down on our quest to reach the end, and three more to go. Prey return to the Waking Sands, it's time for the big rock boy. We faced this monstrous fight once before, but hard mode would pose some new challenges. Just like on normal mode, Landslide is a long cast that knocks us back if we get hit by it, and Tumult is stacked raid-wide bursts of damage. And Rockbuster is your standard tank buster, hitting for around 1500. For the first phase, Titan cycles through Landslide, Tumult, and Rockbuster until we're dropped dead on the floor and forced to swap to Silence Echo. Using Super Bolide, we make it to phase 2 with level sync, but we'd always die shortly after from a lack of healing. Straight back in with Silence Echo, the extra shielding from Brutal Shell gets us to phase 2 comfortably. For every phase of the fight, Tumult adds one one extra hit onto it, so now it would hit three times instead of twice. The only other change is the arena is slightly smaller, and he adds Weight of the Land to his rotation, a dodgeable AoE that appears under every player. Pushing onward to phase three, we've reached the hardest part of the fight. A gigantic wall preventing us from moving forward. Bomb boulders drop down and explode in sequence, though these are easy to dodge and don't do too much. 
The real problem, soon after the bomb boulders, is granite jail. The jail holds us in place for 18 seconds, giving us a gigantic damage down, probably around 75 to 90 percent. And to top it all off, after those 18 seconds, the jail implodes, crushing us for 11,000 damage with our shield on, so most likely around 13,000 total. 13,000 isn't actually that bad. It's a realistic amount of damage to live through, seeing as without food, we had 10,000 health. It was going to be difficult to get the shield we needed, heal back up to full before the jail, and time everything perfectly, but our best bet here was to tank the damage and continue on with the fight. For that first test, I had used Rampart, a 20% damage reduction, so before moving on, I needed to check if Rampart had actually made a difference. And turns out, no, it didn't make a difference. The first hit was 11,663 damage. This hit, without Rampart, was 12,390. If Rampart had made any difference, the second hit should have been above or near 14,500. Thanks, Lanes. But it was within a range of damage that we can attribute it to less shielding from Brutal Shell. So, for now, we just needed pure HP. We had to survive on our own. No mitigations to speak of. Just parry the jail, filthy casual. <laughs> With that in mind, I needed some time to figure out how we were going to get the health required to survive, so we spent the rest of the night playing Koopa Koopa Adventure. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the uh, world's greatest Koopa Koopa Adventure player. Today, we are we are going to be getting our perfect run that we were unable to get last time. No, not the poison. No, it's so. A new day, we start with some warrior testing. With the highest health of any tank, plus thrill of battle to boost our HP even further, we could get lucky and push over the edge with just a simple class swap. With the Shire gear, getting through the start of the fight was manageable, but his third phase did too much damage for us to keep up with. Jailed at less than half HP, there was no way warrior would work. We needed the extra healing from Gunbreaker. A quick break to get some food, confident we had a chance, we go again. Once more, we run through the tests. Warrior with Shire gear and food level synced? No, but we could get the Echo buff. Gunbreaker with food and silence Echo? Initially, no. Until... I'm gonna spam potion for when we're out. Barely. And now we've got the damage down to deal with, so the rest of this fight is going to be a, a slog. And I need to make sure I'm back up to full health for the next jail. Oh wow, it's faster than 60 sec. I won't have Aurora for every jail. Okay, yeah, no way around that, that's enough. Right, time to farm for Echo level sync. Wow, nice Rockbuster auto combo. Dying again and again, we make it to a 50% echo buff, and it's finally time for the real fight. With a 50% stat buff, Warrior couldn't get past our Gunbreaker's silence echo attempt, so we leave and swap back over to Gunbreaker. To farm the echo buff, we didn't actually fight Titan. I ran him in circles for 3 minutes straight to minimize auto attack damage and spam potions and Aurora. After another 15 minutes of Titan wrangling, we can finally try it again. Please just let me do my combo after. No. Oh my god. No, dude, not the way. Ugh. With barely enough health to survive the jail, we get hit by weight of the land afterwards to finish us off. Since he casts weight before we leave the jail, there was no way for us to dodge it. So ends our testing. Two hours of grinding attempts, 19 total deaths to Titan, all for nothing. Only one option left before we have to make an exception. It was time for testing with Epic Echo starting on Warrior. Now we could survive the first Jail and Weight of the Land combo, but by the second, our lack of healing left us with barely any health remaining. And where there are two Jails, a third is soon to follow. Another attempt, we make it to Phase 4, the DPS check for the fight, but die to yet another Jail shortly after. No, another Jail? Oh no, dude, that, I don't think we kill Heart with the Jails in this phase. Entering for the last time, our final hope is Gunbreaker. If this didn't work, well, let's not think about that just yet.
Yeah, I, I should have waited. That was a mistake. He's gonna immediately jail. Jail is the first thing this round, so we jump. That is insane. <laughs> the exact second that I got out of jail during heart phase, it put me into a jail. I had one GCD in between the jails. We've lived it. That's fight done. I just have to kill him in time now. We've got damage down for the rest of the fight. Now it's a race against the clock. I have an attack that's not damage down. That's okay. I'm saving no mercy. Oh, 558 per tick. Gamers, we're done. Yeah! Oh, okay, we are free. We are free to continue the MSQ. Woo! Wow, that was a 30 minute fight. <laughs> we were saved by Titan's final mechanic. In the last phase, every time Titan uses Tumult, he'll add an extra AoE to it, going all the way up to 13. This slowly started to give us enough time to start hitting him off of the damage down. If it hadn't been for that, with how things had been going, I'm not sure we would have been able to clear the fight in time. But thankfully, one GCD was all we needed to get a bleed on Titan for massive damage. And we don't even get any fanfare, no quests to complete, it's just done. With Titan complete, we can finally get back to the MSQ. We could do it, we could hit the button, I could hit accept, it's over, we're done. Garuda is out, I don't have to think about Titan anymore. Ah, uh, what a beautiful day. Oh, you're uh, checking the time left on the video? You thought it was almost over? Well, not so fast, Buster. That may have been a roller coaster, but we've got two more fights to do. We're about to face off against the hardest dungeon in the Realm Reborn, but first, a well-deserved MSQ break. Anything, just put me back into the dungeons. I can't, I can't do another try. I can't think about it. Keeper of the Link is gonna be a cakewalk? I, I would like to hope so. I think I deserve a cakewalk after what we've been through for these last primals. I needed a day like this, a victory day where we just had success and things going well i think if i had another day like that last orum veil vale run i would have lost my mind a whole three quests later we reach keeper of the lake keeper of the lake time baby level synced we delay keeper by like a minute you have to take the trash out okay i'll wait while generic is taking the trash out we're gonna sit and we're gonna wait okay we're gonna hold on for just a minute just give it a moment hello welcome back generic Glad to see it. We died to the first group of enemies after barely taking down one crab. Thankfully though, the crabs were an exception. So long as I have my mitigations ready and Aurora for healing, we can get past the other enemies without any deaths. The first boss is Einhander, a big bird that shoots a Gatling gun and drops explosives. It's a lot of dodging AoEs and healing enough to survive tank busters. It took a while, but Einhander goes down on the first attempt. A few Imperials and Colossi later, we're at the second boss, the Magitek gunship. With easily dodgeable AoEs, it seemed like a simple fight, until 70% when it starts in ad phase. Using up every mitigation I had, we barely managed to scrape by, but couldn't recover fast enough and died to the gunship. What happened? What? All of a sudden? Just, just like that? Yeah, okay, great. Oh. Mm. Back for a second try, expecting the extra enemies this time, the gunship doesn't hit us with blitz and instead drops fire on the ground, lasting just long enough for us to heal back up. At 30%, it summons another ad but it uses a lot of casts that let us keep our distance and goes down pretty easily. With no more surprises, the Magitek gunship goes down. This is very strange that we're able to use the AoEs in the environment to damage these adds, but I'm not complaining. I'll 
to happily take it. Is it really solo if the Garleans are shooting the ads for me? That's a question for all of us, I suppose. Walking cheerily towards the final boss, we face off against the pinnacle of dungeon battles, Midgard Sorm. Things start off simple. Incredibly simple. Dodge the AoEs, dodge the other color of AoE, and hit the boss. But at 90% health, we're brought back to Gaius in the Praetorium and face a DPS check. Both of these dragons need to die before the bar reaches 100 or it's instant death. Wow, that's a real enrage. With just single target attacks, we could kill one dragon by 70% of the enraged, so uh, this wasn't looking good. Just to be sure, we tried our invincibility from Super Bolide, but the enrage goes straight through and kills us anyway. To get through this, we needed every last ounce of damage available to us, so it's time to run some quick math. With two enemies, it would be more damage to use my AoE combo than my single target. Over three hits, my single target combo has a total potency of 710. In three hits, my AoE combo has a total potency of 360 per enemy, so 720 total. Plus, my AoE combo lets me use Burst Strike every two attacks instead of three, making the actual total potency 900 every three hits. We spent a lot of time on this, even swapping over to Warrior to try and find the best damage available to us. But after a long day of fighting Titan, it was time to take a break, so we rest and come back another day. Returning to our main goal, Koopa Koopa Adventure, we're dragged away to get back to trying to clear Keeper. With a new plan for the best possible DPS, we rush back to the final boss, but after three attempts, the best we could do was 38% left on the last dragon. This wasn't something we could overcome on level 6, and it's because of how Final Fantasy patches work. With new patches for an expansion, the gear players can make powers up, sometimes exponentially. At the end of 2.0, the fight with Ultima, we were expected to have around eye level 60 equipment, and we had more than double that with the Ironworks gear at eye level 130. But now we're in patch 2.4. Keeper of the Lake's expected gear was much closer to the maximum for A Realm Reborn. The fight was built for our gear level, making a solo DPS check on level sync next to impossible. That was absolutely perfect. I, I threw in the strength pot poisoning pot as well, just to try for that one, but there, there's, yeah, we can't get past that. That is crazy. But that was a flawless run. That felt good. That felt like I, I genuinely did that perfectly, so I can at least be happy that that was as good as that could have been. For the first time, a dungeon is forcing us to silence echo. Not the first time Castra and Praetorium exist. Oh, I, I, guess, I guess you're right, but do those really count? But before I committed to it, chat wanted to check how Warrior would do. So we swap classes and turn level sync back on. In theory, a full combo with Berserk, an ability that guarantees my attacks to the max damage for three hits, should make a difference and might be enough to do it. But before we can try, Warrior ends up not having the healing needed to beat the first boss. And so we're back to silence echo with Gunbreaker. With our buffed stats and stronger attacks, we take down the second dragon at 76%. From there, the rest of the fight is easy. That single DPS check was the only reason Silence Echo had to be used. With Midgard Stormer defeated, there's only one thing left before we've completed A Realm Reborn. Resting and celebrating our victory, we wake up the next day with our eyes set on the finish line. This was it. MSQ done, the Chrysalis was unlocked. For now, there's only one mechanic that matters. Nabrialis will constantly cast Spark, hitting for over 3,000 damage without mitigation. Half my health. Then, occasionally, Nabrialis casts double, making his next Spark cast happen twice. 6,000 damage without mitigation. 6,000 damage of my 8,000 health. This ends the fight every time. Level sync is out the window, and there's no way to farm for Echo Box. So it's time to leave and craft some necessary items. After fishing up a few sharks, we craft potent poisoning potions, X potions of strength, and flint caviar to ensure we deal the most possible damage. Heading back in with Silence Echo, it's time to learn the rest of the fight. Now that we can survive double sparks, we reach the first real mechanic. Orb Phase, as I've lovingly dubbed it, has multicolored orbs floating from the edge of the arena towards Nabrialis. Running into the orbs will get rid of them, while giving you a vulnerability to the damage that specific orb deals. You have to collect the orbs in alternating colors to minimize damage taken. And for every orb that reaches Nabrialis in the center, the damage dealt at the end of the phase increases. After many failed attempts, a run lives by the skin of our teeth, and we're on to the next phase. Teleporting to either side of the arena, Nabrialis casts End of Days, an incredible attack to heal during. Afterwards, he casts Double, Spark, 
spark again, and then teleports away for another end of days. This continues on for a while, and is by far the easiest part of the fight. But then, at 60%, he starts to use triple. I'm sure you can guess where this is going. And there is a third health. Okay. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> My favorite. We managed to get him to 40%, but couldn't heal fast enough. Even getting back up to full health, he started using triple cast one after the other. Dead again, something needed to change. And so we're on our last resort. An NPC purchase that's as close to an exception as it can get. A full set of level 60 outsider gear purchased from the Calamity Salvager for a measly 5,000 gil. Desperate to not face another epic echo fight, we were at our peak. Full level 60 equipment, this was the only way to survive the triple casts. One more time, we enter the Chrysalis. Scraping our way past the triple casts, we've reached the final mechanic. At 20%, Nabrialis will bring us into a rift. Meteors crashing down around us, with one giant meteor slowly descending towards the middle, we're on a timer. To escape the rift, we need to kill the tear. Even for a full party of eight people, this tear causes wipes more often than any other mechanic but we have a trick up our sleeve to take it down. When Nabrialis drags us into the rift, any active buff gets extended exponentially. Right before we get dragged in, we'd use our damage buff, mitigations, and an X potion of strength. Then, once we reach the other side, we'll be the most overpowered gunbreaker to ever exist, which would hopefully be strong enough to kill the tear. Almost, 6% is pretty close. Now we've seen everything. It's time to end this. Huge! Okay. Oh my god. Just barely. And we're good. Just live the rest. Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Because that is it! It's over! It's stuck! It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. It has been half a year of my life to get through a Realm Reborn. Half, half, half a year of my life. This by itself has been one of the best things I've ever done. With Solo and just how much I've loved this challenge, to getting to share this with all of you. It has, without a question, just been one of the best things I've ever chosen to do. In these final moments, rushing through the MSQ, striking down a dragon larger than the bridge we stand on, blocked 
from moving any further. We've reached the end. 264 hours to solo A Realm Reborn. But before you go, I have one more thing to show you as we lay down to rest. What about Crystal Tower? You know you can't do the Crystal Tower, right? Oh, you guys can't do Crystal Tower. You can't make it to have a Crystal Tower. Without Crystal Tower. You're not gonna be able to do Crystal Tower. No way you're gonna make it past Crystal Tower. They're wrong. They're all wrong. I'll show them.